Good morning, everyone, from Ford City, Pennsylvania. This is Chuck King on Thursday, May 27th, 2021, bringing you the morning Bible study. We're in the fundamental doctrines of New Testament disciples, and we're studying baptisms and now baptism in the Holy Spirit, and we're going through the book of Acts to see the examples of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit and how the apostles followed up on these new disciples. So we're in Acts 10, verses 44 to 47. This morning, we're going to begin with Cornelius and his household. If you remember, Cornelius was a Roman centurion. He was not a Jew. Uh, he, He was not yet a disciple of Jesus, but he was seeking God. He and his whole family were earnestly seeking after the Lord, and they used to devote themselves to prayer and to support of the poor. They gave a lot of money, gifts to the poor. And the scripture teaches us that that the Lord noticed this, this seeking of this group of people and their obedience to help the poor as well as to pray. And he sent an angel to Cornelius and told him that he should go over to the next town and find Peter and have him come and explain the way of salvation. So it was uh, such a powerful revelation to Cornelius that he immediately sent men to find Peter in the next town. And of course, at the same time this was going on, Peter had his own revelation on the rooftop of the the unclean animals being left down in a sheet several times, three times, I believe it was, and God speaking to him by the Holy Spirit and saying, rise, Peter, kill and eat. And of course, Peter resisted the idea of breaking the Jewish law to eat unclean animals. And the Lord told him that what God has called clean, he should never call unclean. And Peter understood after the vision that the Lord was speaking to him and giving him understanding that he uh, should be open to the Gentiles. And just at that time, Cornelius' men showed up and told Peter what had happened. Peter invited them in, and the the Lord spoke to Peter uh, to go with them without hesitating. And so the next day, they went back to Cornelius' house, and there was a a pretty large gathering of him, his family, and perhaps others that were associated with this devotion to prayer and supporting the poor and seeking God. And uh, verse 44 says, while Peter was still speaking these words, he he preached a short message, uh, uh, preached the gospel in a very short message. And while Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell upon all those who heard the word. So there's that terminology again, how the Holy Spirit came upon or fell upon those who were receiving the message. And uh, so these folks from Cornelius's family and and extended family there they were already seeking God believing God for whatever he had for them and so they were easily converted upon hearing the gospel and uh, they were so they were so receptive that the holy spirit just supernaturally came upon them like on the day of pentecost Without any instruction or laying on of hands, the Holy Spirit filled that group of new believers. Verse 45, and those of the circumcision, meaning meaning the Jewish believers, those of the circumcision who believed were astonished, it says, because there were those Jewish Christians who were steeped in the law, the old covenant, and they were amazed at, uh, that this move of God just like on the day of Pentecost, happened among Gentiles. As many as came with Peter, see, a number of them had come along with Peter as as a team, 
uh, to work with him because the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles also. How did they know this? How did they know the Holy Spirit was poured out? Verse 46 tells us, For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. So the same manifestation that that they experienced on the day of Pentecost, the outpouring of the Spirit in supernatural fashion coming on the people, and the response of, of a new language, an unknown language, to seek and magnify God with, <clears throat> happened upon Cornelius and his household. As a result, Peter answered, can anyone forbid water, meaning water baptism, that these should not be baptized to have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? So they recognized that the same outpouring of the Spirit that they had experienced on the day of Pentecost had just occurred here in Cornelius' house upon these new believers. And so they didn't stop there with the sovereign move of God converting these people and filling them with the Spirit or baptizing them with the Holy Spirit and giving them the gift of tongues. But they, as Peter said clearly, needed to be water baptized. So we see those same three doctrines being applied in every situation. Genuine repentance, water baptism, and baptism in the Holy Spirit. And in this case, it was uh, the out of order in the sense that the, the Lord sovereignly filled them with the Spirit before their baptism. So that's example of the Gentiles getting saved and filled with the Spirit as well as baptized in water. <clears throat> now we have Acts 19, verses 1 to 6. This is the example of Paul on his ministry journey, ministry trip, came to Ephesus, and he met some disciples of John the Baptist. Let's read this verse 1. And it happened while Apollos was at Corinth that Paul, having passed through the upper regions, came to Ephesus, and finding some disciples, he said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? So that's the first question Paul had for this group of disciples he met and we we find out it was about uh, about 12 12 men a small group of disciples and the first question he asked was did you receive the holy spirit when you believe so he must have perceived that they were immature or uh, needing the holy spirit and so you see again the apostles burden to make sure people have truly repented, been baptized in water, and filled with the Spirit. How did they respond? They said to him, we have not so much heard as heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. So they were really untaught and ignorant and immature in their understanding of Scripture. So Paul knew that they weren't really truly saved. He said to them, into what then were you baptized, or how were you baptized? So they said, into John's baptism, meaning John the Baptist, which was a baptism of repentance. We've already covered that. It was a baptism before believer's baptism in Jesus Christ. It was a, a different baptism. Verse 4, then Paul said, John indeed baptized, or dipped people, or put people under the water, with a baptism of repentance, saying to the people that they should believe on him who would come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. So Paul affirms that the baptism of John was a baptism of repentance, but that John was always pointing the people to eventually follow Jesus as the Messiah. Verse 5, and all true disciples would respond this way, those who were seeking God. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. So they understood that they weren't on the right path or doing the right thing. 
and they needed to have their sins washed away through repentance and water baptism. And so they were. They were baptized as Christians, not as followers of John the Baptist. And then Paul didn't let it go. He, he realized they were true believers now baptized in water for the remission of their sins, for the putting off of the old nature and the resurrection of, to new life. But Paul didn't stop there. He laid his hands on them, verse 6. When Paul laid his hands on them, there's another part of the doctrine of laying on of hands. The Holy Spirit came upon them. There it is again. The Holy Spirit comes upon people. It's a supernatural move of God. And they spoke with tongues and prophesied. So we have a similar, very similar experience as on the day of Pentecost, as among Cornelius's, uh, Cornelius's family, as Philip and the Samaritans after Peter and John came down, and now here in Acts 19 among the former disciples of John the Baptist, the Holy Spirit came on them and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. So they not only had the gift of tongues manifested, but they had prophecy manifested in this small group of former disciples of John the Baptist. So again, we see this example along with Cornelius' household in the previous scripture. We see a group of disciples of John the Baptist truly getting saved, water baptized, and baptized in the Holy Spirit and manifesting the gifts of tongues and prophecy. So this is the pattern of the New Testament. The apostolic teaching was uh, applied in every group of new believers. And this is why we have to ask ourselves a question. Have we conformed to the doctrine of the New Testament and of the apostles concerning true repentance Water baptism and baptism in the Holy Spirit. These are the basic and fundamental doctrines that unless we apply them among our people, we can never move on to maturity. God bless you. We'll talk more about this tomorrow.